Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome back to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as we continue with our Let's Play of The Banner Saga 2. We're on episode 24, and in the last episode we fought, we had people get hurt, but we survived. And it's time for Plus 16 Renown and the After Fight Aftermath of After Ritude. It's going to be okay, I think. I don't know how long it's going to take us to recover from our injuries, and I sort of do want to rest, but I think that might not be conducive to us staying alive. Will we make it without any more horrible things? You can almost make out the old ford in the distance. But there's open land between you and it. Oddly, the dredge seem to have fallen away. Some ravens begin slowing, tripping over their own feet with exhaustion. Krumer, the old war, the old Varl war leader, speaks up. This reminds me of the ambush I sprung on uh, Talon, the craziest chieftain of men I have ever fought. His fighters were all strung out and tired like us. One small trick would have ruined our ambush, but lucky for us, they never figured it out. Well, what are you getting at? I'm not risking any more fighters on one of your death wishes. Keep quiet. Talk like that only spreads fear. What are you getting at? Bah, never mind the details, the old Varl says. Let me take some fighters to handle this situation. Don't make me regret this. You're too young to have regrets, Krumer says. I've only had two in my life. One was sleeping too close to the fire in a great hall after eating eggs for twelve days straight. I'll tell you the second another time. A dozen fighters take off with the war leader and disappear over a hill. Well, hopefully our boy comes back. Hopefully that was the right choice. Well, looks like we're going to make it to Old Ford without any other issues. Is he going to make it back to us? It's a question. God, of all places to make a final stand, I bring us to the old fort. A human prince that should have crumpled a hundred years ago. Okay, well there you go. Can't we just destroy the bridge and keep going? We need water and sleep. We need many things. We need many things. These people will help us. Don't attack them. Will they? Will they help us? Well, we'll find out soon enough, I suppose. Shield wall, you say, or think you say. Fatigue hinders your every thought. No one forms up as a large group of humans approach. Oh, that's not good. From the buildings near the old ford. A small, stout man leads them. Mercenaries, huh? You don't look worth a damn, let alone coin. You reach for your axes, but a few spearmen make it clear that you shouldn't. Easy, the last thing we need is to spill each other's blood before that dark wall or the dredge get their chance, eh? Dredge, the word echoes in your head. They don't know what they're doing. The man makes a face, and even Folka lifts her head enough to squint at you. Well, we're charged with keeping this route open for the clans that went to Auberang, the man says. So we know we're going to be killing as many of those dredge as we can. Threats and commands come to mind, but never make it out of your mouth. The march, the fighting, the lack of sleep all catch up with you and you fall to a knee. You try to catch yourself, but gracelessly, <laughs> your head hits the snow. And sleepy time. Big old nap time for big old Bulberg. Sensing you're being watched, you leap to your feet and reach for Claw and Fang, but they're missing. You roar in anger. The short man at the entrance takes a step back. E easy, Bulver. Easy. No one's trying to harm you. Or easy, Bulver. No one's trying to harm you. <laughs> you get to your feet, head pounding. Where are the ravens, you ask? I woke you first, he says. I woke you first, he says, but others need to get up, too. I let you sleep as long as I dared, but we're almost out of time. He motions to the side table where you find your axes undamaged. Who are you, and what do you want, you ask? My name's Hatter, but that won't matter in a few hours, the man says. We came from a core. 
We're the rear guard of the clan's army that went to challenge the king in Arborang. With axes in hand, you ask. And what do you want from me? Well, I'm no battle leader, Hadar says. I'm just a skirmisher like all the rest here, and proud of myself for not running off already. Plain and simple, you know how to fight, so tell us what to do, and well, we'll do it. We've got fighters who could use some tips or encouragement, Hadar says. Uh, maybe we could build some stake walls with parts of buildings? Up to you, but you don't have time to do much, and no one's expecting miracles. Regardless of how this plays out, I'm glad you stumbled in here when you did. Alright, well there you have it. Stepping out into the cold air freshen or refreshens you. You look around and are surprised to see stragglers crossing the bridge. Can't believe it, can you? Krumer says, walking among the dozen fighters you sent with him. One of these days, all of you will realize there's only one thing tougher than an old Varl war leader on the mission. Ravens look ar around him look tired, but happy to have made it. You grab a handful of snow and squeeze it in your fist until a trickle until a trickle of water falls to the ground. A silent tribute to your ravens who didn't make it. Varl dregs. Cool. All right, and here we are. We are in a town. We have volunteers, houses, and heroes. Let's go to the market. Always good to start there. I don't... Hmm. Drawing aggro... Yeah, none of these things seem to be on par with what we need. We have nine days worth of food. I don't think we need that. It does not appear that we can rest. So I don't know how that's going to go. Are we hurt or are we recovered? I'm hoping that we're all recovered. Okay, good. I'm like, I'm hoping we're all recovered, but I am not sure. Alright, I think we're going to pump Bulwark up more. Why? Because I want to. That's literally the only reason. We're going to confirm 19 Renown to get him to rank 9. Okay. Now, what do we have here? I didn't see this one. 10% chance to cause puncture. Uh, what, what does that do? I don't know what puncture does. And what else do we have? Divert. Small twist can turn a crushing blow into a scuff on your armor. Oh, we can avoid armor attacks. Oh, that's kind of interesting. You would think that that would be up here, though. I, I don't know. Um, well, I suppose we should do that. Close it out. And we're going to promote you to level 10. Because we already said before, who's ever going to make it to level 10? Well, now we know. Bulwark's going to make it to level 10. Boom. That's right. We're making our berserker insane. And also really strong. That's mostly what we're doing with them. Oh, we have four points available. Ooh. We are all shiny. I think this is the last level you can promote to as well. That is pretty stellar. We get dodge, chance to avoid strength attacks, and bonus to hit chance. I don't feel like that's needed. All right, what else do we got? We can get two points here to max out that. We could max out this as well. Bonus crit... Didn't I do this already? Oh, you know what? I must not have uh, must not have confirmed it. There we go. All right, so now we're maxed out. So we didn't get four points. We only got two. My bad. My bad. All right, so there it is. That is all done and over with. We're going to go back to the market. We'll get two or four or whatever it is if we get two per. There it is. It's done. We'll confirm the supplies. I know it's not super useful, but eh. We have houses and volunteers. I guess houses. Walking among the buildings, a few ravens introduce you to a carpenter from the town. Easy enough to bring a few of these homes and barns down, he says, pointing with a hammer. If you and your ravens help me cart some of the materials from them, we'll make it so any force coming across the bridge will pay dearly. Get started. We don't have any archers to take advantage of that. Um... Not to worry, the man says. We've got a few. They're not the best shots in the world, but they can help. What do you say? Well, I'll spend my time doing something else. Alright, we're going to go to the volunteers here. The fighters, men and women from Akur and a few other northern towns, watch as you approach. Show me your shield wall, you bark. Only a few of them move and raise their shields. So you charge them, sending terrified humans running and skidding across the ground. Scared or fey and undisciplined, you shout. Either way, you'll be dead in the first assault. Shield wall! This time, everyone runs lock shields and brace with their shoulders. You still break through, but it's a better effort. 
Folka and a few other ravens join you to correct stances and swings, but it's the arrival of clansmen from Bindal that surprises you. You never had to get us this far, but you did, a man says. Time for us to pitch in. Hopefully, we won't muck everything up. Alright. Ooh, we got 100 fighters. You show the new volunteers how to reinforce the shield wall. After an hour, you tell everyone to rest and get ready for the real fighting. In private, Folka asks, think it'll make a difference? They're making us stand, so it already has. Sometimes you impress me, Folka says. Just when I think you hate everything, you say something that shows you haven't given up on all the rest of us. You grunt and walk away. Alright, let's go talk to Folka for one last uh, hurrah. Eh? Eh? The shield maiden tightens her... Tightens straps on her armor while glaring at you with red-rimmed eyes. If you've got something to say, say it. We'll be dead before long. Eh, we don't have to be. We, well, we could leave right now. Whoever's after us would roll through here without slowing. We'd be caught in the open. Then we could leave the damn cart here. Let the dredge have it. I gave an oath to... An oath isn't worth all of our fayin' lives. That's exactly what an oath is worth. Start acting like a raven. That's exactly what an oath is worth. In the following silence, you see Folka's eyes brim with tears. I don't want to die. Not yet. And I don't want you to die either. Talk like this is forbidden in the company, but you turn your head, giving her a moment to collect herself. What would you do if the person you followed for years was no longer the same? I'd kill them and take over. You want to try? <laughs> That's awesome. I'm trying to figure out what's happening to me. I don't have time to figure out what you're talking about. I'm trying to figure out what's happening to me. You said yourself we'll be dead soon. What have you come up with? There's a voice in my head growing louder. I've been fighting to keep it quiet. Bellower's voice, probably. But, but Bellower's dead. His, his body, he's asleep. I think the arrow keeps him that way. Folka nods. The conclusion doesn't seem too far-fetched for her. These dreams are things he's seen. The Volka did something to betray him. Huh. They were working with the Sunder? I think so, but this has more to do with Ivan and Juno. They did something. Something bad. I don't even think Zephyr knows what they did. The two of you look over at Zephyr. The Volca stares into a fire, lost in thought. So what does all this mean? Nothing if we die here. It means we don't trust Volca. I don't know. Nothing if we die here. Now it's if we die here? I thought you were already claiming defeat. God, you're annoying. If we die here, I think you'll miss me. You begin to growl at her when a scout's horn signals all fighters to the bridge. If we make it through this, someone in Manahar is going to answer to me. You storm off to the fighting, building your rage with each step. Swear to me! Alright. Keep your wits. Ooh. Uh, the immensity of the dredge force standing just across the bridge is both terrifying and wondrous. Their droning sounds shake the ground and you wonder if the old ford can withstand it. Fear is strong in the air, you faintly hear some humans running away. But your ravens, they stand firm against the impossible odds. You grant yourself a moment of pride for that. Suddenly, the tall wall of dredge warriors begins to move. Well, that's just creepy. Okay, so fiery little dude with yeah, mm -hmm. that that's a th I, words. I don't. Let's begin the battle. <laughs> oh my goodness! Hey, that's a. That's a Mender or a, a Volca. Who is that? Is that Nichols? But he's dead. Don't be fooled. That isn't Nichols, but Eyeless. 
Oh. Well, there you go. So that's a thing that happened. Also, super creepy, and I'm concerned. As I'm sure many of you would be as well. With the super creepy, concerning things that are happening before us right now. You get to go over there, you get to go over here... No, move, yes, you there. You there, and you in the back. Frozen dead guy gets to stay frozen and dead. Begin! I'm almost not sure what to do. Looks like Nichols gets to move first. What if I decide to champion here? I don't know what's gonna... Oh, nothing. I'm like, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but it's probably not gonna be great. Alright, the downside is we missed out a little bit on an opportunity to do some damage there, but it could have been better and or worse. We'll scoot up, we will smack Nichols in the face and end him. I'm not sure, like, that was very under... Okay. Is that thing always there? Because I don't remember seeing that before just now. That is very large and has a lot of armor and other various things that seem very bad. Alright, who's next for you guys? The little dude. Hmm. Well... I guess Breeze is probably a pretty good skill to use. Alright, wish me luck, folks. Uh, da, da, da. Charge in, Bulwark! Do some damage. Oh, completely deflected, huh? That's a bit disappointing. Well, not ideal. Guess we'll move forward. I think he's gonna get hit with something pretty bad here in a minute. <sighs> Alright, it's her turn to do some stuff again. Cool. Move over here. We will take out a lot of your armor. And then we'll have our boy do some work. But those, okay, those are the splody things. I'm a little bit more inclined to accept the splody things as opposed to the other things. Alright, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute, let's kill him. One, and done. Yeah, no deflection this time around. Okay, he broke my shield a little bit. I only have one point of uh, damage on that other side. That's not so bad. Gonna move up over here, and we are going to smack you upside the noggin and do some damage. Not enough to end you, but enough that, well, you're gonna back up at least. Alright, we're going to move the Volca up here. We're going to use Runic Gale. No, not Runic Gale, I'm sorry. We're going to use Mend to get Bulwark up and running again. Keep him as healthy as we can. I'm kind of terrified at this. Oh gosh. That actually wasn't as bad as I was anticipating. Huh, who knew? And we are actually clear on this side. We can just go straight in and attack him. Unfortunately, the best we can do is breaking through some of his armor. He's got 19 of it. And we got to do a little bit of strength damage. And we knocked the armor out of almost everybody else, too. That actually wasn't too shabby for us. We move on over here. Unfortunately, there's a giant hole in the ground that kind of prevents us from doing a lot of stuff. War Leader's gonna do some work. I'm a fan. We need our Mender to come back and do some work as well. Over here, and I believe we're gonna have to start laying into you. Breaking some armor. We're gonna have some armor broken on us. We we'll move over here with our boy. Unfortunately, we're gonna use a lot of his extra oomph. I am not a fan of, but, again, if we can break through the armor, we can kill this guy off. He's fairly happy, and it just ricochets to everyone else. That is definitely a good sign. Okay.
pretty sure he's gonna end me. What skills do we have? We have Malice. Well, when malicized, do what you can before you go down, I guess. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Oh, we survived it, though. Oh, good, our Mender's alive. Yeah, or sorry, not a Mender, but uh, our boy didn't die there. I'm super happy about that, like, ridiculously ha happy. Oh, he jumped into the body. Okay, I'm like, where did the giant dude go? So, okay, it makes sense now. That is Eyeless. Okay, it all starts to come together. It starts to make sense. Get back some of your armor, friend. Yeah, that's not the play. I do not like my positioning at all right now. Um... Alright, what if we call the weak? Let's try it. It gave me another turn. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, I should have been using that so much sooner than I have. Oh my gosh, I am a fool, ladies and gentlemen. I am a foolish fool. I am a foolish, foolish fool. Big attack there. I think Eyeless is like, hmm, maybe I should have done things a little bit differently than I have. He's right up over on that area that's going to get him wrecked. I think Fasalt is probably going down here soon. I don't foresee him surviving much longer than he already has. Well, let's weaken you, I guess. You're very nearly done. Oh, you're leaving. Alright, you're taking out the salt. There it is. Okay. Um, I suppose we can just end you right now. I mean, there's no way you survive this, so... Bye. That was a mistake, I think. That seems like that might have been a mistake. Eyeless falls to the ground. Suddenly, the chaotic sounds of battle quiet... Quieten? Okay. They quieten. That's a weird word. I'm, is that a normal? Like, is that normal? I, I I don't remember ever. They quiet down. Uh, hmm. And the surrounding dredge lower their weapons in shock. A group of dredge guards break through the crowd and begin lifting Eyeless's body. Then you see your arm move. The Sunder is still alive. There's a chance to finish Eyeless if you and a few others are willing to risk charging the dredge. There's no telling what will happen if she's allowed to recover, but you feel a pang of sadness at, at the thought of killing her. On me, today we kill a Sunder. Or while they're stunned, we can move to Manahar. That's a tough call. Um, I think we're gonna... Yeah, I think we're gonna move to Manahar. It's probably not great. While Eyeless is carried back into her ranks, you're wounded or dragged back toward the town. Well, that's something, I guess. I mean, I think we could have won the fight, but... I feel like the dredge aren't the end-all, be-all bad things right now. So I feel like if we... I don't want to necessarily say befriend the dredge, but if we don't, like, go crazy and make them hate us more than they probably already do, we'll probably be fine. We'll see. Fatigue slows your muscles as you take the reins of the yaks pulling Bellower's cart. Thousands of eyes watch you. The scared faces of so many dredge left on uh, the battlefield pull at you. Huh. Your mind fills with images of Ivan on the tower, of dredge twisting, warping in the darkness, shaking, slobbering, roaring. You fight to regain control of your mind. The, dr the dredge begin moving south along the river. Not as an army, but as a people fleeing danger. Many of them start crossing the old Ford Bridge. Bulwark, Fulka shouts. Take the cart, get to Manahar, we'll hold them here as long as we can. The shield maiden's voice clears your head for a moment. You see her turning proudly, commanding ravens into formation, and a good munder to lead the clansmen of Arborang. She looks back at you, holding your gaze. 
We'll be right behind you. Go! Then she joins the shield wall, leading or lending her strength strength to those around her. Alright, well there you have it. Bulwark, Bulwark, Volka, Zephyr says, pulling your attention from the raven banner near the bridge. We must leave. Now! The Volka, their... The Volka, their meddling causes. All of it. You rub at a pain in your chest. Zephyr flinches at the look in your eyes, but you forget her and begin marching toward Manahar. Toward vengeance. Chapter 14. Brothers Fight and Kinship Stain. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, when we get to a stopping point, we will break off the episode and we'll continue in the next one. As I said, I think we're getting closer and closer to the conclusion of all that is the Banner Saga 2. Alright, we will rejoin Rook and his cause. Seems like everyone's headed for the capital these days, the small villager, village baker says. I figure it's just as well to stay put. We've got enough around here to survive, even with the king cutting off trade. You're testing your new bowstring and only half listening to the man when Hakan walks up. The baker, unaccustomed to Varl, falls quiet and backs up. Huh. The capital's only a few days away now. I know. I'd like to believe we'll make it without any more problems, but... That hasn't been our luck. No sense thinking things will change now. You laugh a little, but notice the distant look in Hakan's eyes as he looks toward the Varl tents. I wonder what the old kings like Throster and S Scrimmer would do in my place. Well, they probably wouldn't talk to a human. They would have kept their people alive, same as you. I just lo lost half of my people in the old wood. It's like Ivor told me, you can't prepare for a giant serpent attacking. Not even ancient kings can do that. Just keep them alive, no matter what happens in Arborang, protect your people. The Khan looks at you, the confusion leaving his face. Let's get what we need and get going. Maybe it'll be as easy as you make it sound. You give the Varl an encouraging smile, it's the best you can do. Alright. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will end this episode of the Banner Saga 2. As we edge ever closer to Arborang and Manahar. I don't know. We'll keep going and struggling and fighting and failing and succeeding and just doing stuff. It's what we do. Alright, folks, until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>